We are here with uh, Mr. John Pucker, which is the director of the Pucker Gallery in Boston. And uh, we are speaking about uh, an artist, which is called Samuel Buck. What can you tell us about him? Great. Sam is a young boy who was born in Vilna and grew up in a wonderful family. His dad was a doctor. And all of a sudden, to their lives came a huge change, and uh, the Holocaust came, and the Jews had to go. Everything he knew was changed, and he was then uh, rescued, if you will, in a convent for a number of years, and then immigrated on a boat to Palestine after being in a displaced persons camp, and began to establish himself as an artist. And he studied in Israel, and he studied in Paris, and he worked for a while in Europe, and today he lives in Boston, Massachusetts. And he creates a wonderful world and a wonderful story, which I want to try to explain to you today. He's a surrealistic painter, some say in the style of Salvador Dali. And he's known for taking objects which you think you understand and asking you to ask questions. So he's an artist of questions who survived the Holocaust. This painting here that you see is done in 1991. It's called With a Target. And if you see and you look at the painting, you'll see a number of different chess pieces. Chess was important to Sam because his stepfather was a championship chess player, so he understood very well how to play the game of chess. Okay. And I ask the question, and people think often, that chess is a game. But actually, if you think about it, chess is not a game. My piece kills your piece, your piece kills my piece. That is not a game. It's a game of war, or war games. And so the piece is actually a metaphor for what happened in the Holocaust, what happened to the Jewish people. And rather than showing human bodies and skeletons and bones, the artist has chosen to use different elements of the game of chess, or the war of chess, to show what happened to the Jewish people. And so if you look at the pieces in the foreground, you can look at two distinct pieces from the game of chess. One has its head cut off, and the other is bruised and torn. Also, you'll notice that these pieces are approximately, in the scale of the piece, about six feet tall, and we know that chess pieces aren't six feet tall. We also know that chess pieces, if you look at the two horses here, you know that they're not made of stone. But again, the artist is making something surreal to try to describe something to you, to try to have you ask questions. Is it really possible that the Holocaust occurred? Is it really possible that six million people died? It shouldn't be, but it did happen. So again, if you look at the painting here and you see the different chess pieces, you also see a target here in the center, the target being the Jewish people. You see straight up ahead the Jewish star, the yellow star of David, which all the Jews were made to wear, and underneath that the Ten Commandments, okay, the shape of the Ten Commandments in blue. And so what is God's role in the Holocaust? Where was God? Also in the foreground you can see a pair of dice here, numbers on those dice in this case, or the large hole on the side of the dice. You'll see those pockmarks are actually bullet holes. Those are not the regular things you'd see on a game of dice. This is a game of war in which the Jewish people were confronted. Nothing of their request, nothing of their doing. If you look on the left-hand side here of the painting, you're going to see a piece of wood. And it looks to me as if it has a keyhole in it. Some other people said it may be a spoon or another pawn from the game of chess. But in actuality, I think it is a keyhole. I think it's the keyhole where all the keys were taken away from the Jewish people symbolically, that they couldn't go back to their homes. They were no longer human beings, they no longer had anywhere to go, and it's blocked off. And that's the artist remembering that feeling. Also here we see beautifully draped fabrics around this poor item with its head cut off, or beautiful fabric here on the side. And these may be remembrances for the artist of his blanket that was taken away when he was a small boy and forced to leave home. Without his blanket, without his teddy bear, without his security, his taken out to the forest and shot with his grandparents in the Panare Forest. He was able to get out with his mother and to begin to build a new life.
On the top corner here in the center, you can also see a very large easel, easel sticking up to the heavens. That's a representation of where the artist would go forward and become a painter and paint the story of the Holocaust for others to see and understand what happened. On the far right-hand side of the painting, you can see a target with some arrows in it. Those arrows being shot into the heart of the Jewish people. But as you see, they don't all penetrate the center circle. The Jewish people continued. They couldn't be knocked down. If you look more closely at the back of that, you'll notice that that is actually made of stone. It's not a normal bow and arrow where you would try to shoot that arrow into the soft cushioning. It went into stone, and you know that an arrow can't penetrate stone. So again, it's a juxtaposition, a question. How can an arrow go into stone? It can't. How could someone have killed six million people, a million children? Did that really happen? Yes, it did happen. How did we let it happen? Create questions for the viewer. Take his past history, bring it into today's world, and make it relevant to you, so that you begin to look at the painting and engage these questions, these realities. Is it really a chess game? Is it really a game of war? Is it really a Jewish star? Is it just a yellow star? Is it really a soft piece of fabric? Is it a boy's little blanket? A childhood, an innocence taken away? These are questions that he wants the viewer to begin to engage and have conversations around and bring into their own life today. Mm -hmm. Why do we still have genocide in the world today? Why do we have the issues in Darfur that we have? This is not right. Why do we have hatred in our own communities? Here in Mexico City, why will one gang member kill another? Why will one drug lord kill another? We need to be focused together as a people not to let this happen again and to figure out as a society how to live together in the 21st century. Now, are you Jewish? I am Jewish, yes. Okay, and uh, how did you meet uh, someone? Uh, my father owns and my mother owns an art gallery in Boston, which we've had since 1967, and they've been showing Samuel Bach's work since approximately 1970 in our gallery, and today we represent the, world, uh, the work around the world. We're doing a number of exhibitions with museums and Holocaust museums and centers to try to get the public to understand the issues of the Holocaust, the issues of today, and how it resonates in everyone's own community and in your own life. And uh, I heard that maybe uh, this artist will present uh, its painting, his painting uh, in Mexico. How is, uh, what, what is this project about? Uh, we're working now to start to lay the foundation to work with the Museum uh, of Holocaust Intolerance here in Mexico City, which is a beautiful, world-class museum which you should be so proud of. I travel all around the world on behalf of Mr. Bach and the gallery, and it's an extraordinary museum. Um, and our hope is to one day to put together a show of approximately 60 original works of art from different bodies of work since 1930, when he started out as a boy through to today, to try to explain the story and to get together this in Mexico City as one of the finest cities in the world. And uh, what is the story of Samuel Beck? What is, where does he live now? And, uh... Sam lives in Weston, Massachusetts today, which is right outside of Boston with his wife. He spends approximately 12 hours a day painting every day. He's incredibly prolific. He believes that it's his responsibility to paint the story, a painter in words, to give people the story of the Holocaust and to give them something to help the world, a tikkun, tikkun olam try to make the world a better place. Olam. And he views that it's his responsibility and his job to help communicate that through his paintings. Why, how does he live, manage to, to live? How does he support himself? Does he support himself with his painting? Yes, 100%. Uh, Sam does very well. He works very hard. Um, and his paintings are sold uh, through our gallery and all over the world and at auction at Sotheby's and Christie's and different places. He's collected all over the world. We had a client come in last month who was from Australia. And we have clients who are art clients who come in, first of all, who are collectors. Second of all, we have people who come in who want to understand and have something from the Holocaust. Thou shalt not forget. And so they come in and they want to be understood and have this in their home or in their museum for others to enjoy. We have people who come in and buy the work who are part of the liberation team, children of people who liberated. We have people who come in who are Germans who... Uh, were on the other side and want to have a piece of this in their home to teach their children so they will never forget. So it's a very wide range group of audience for the artist. Number one, first and foremost, collected as a wonderful artist. Okay, do you think uh, 
and you can help the world with art. Absolutely. Uh, we've been working in our galleries, as I said, since 1967, and our vision for all of our artists, we represent 35 artists around the world, both two-dimensional and three-dimensional, is about uh, communication and education. And if we can open up people's hearts and eyes to art, we believe they will feel more valuable themselves and be part of the solution of Tikkun Olam. How, how can people uh, help Samuel back with the memory of the Holocaust? Because we know now that survivors are, are slowly disappearing and that many people negate the Holocaust. So uh, how, can, how can anyone who is interested of, with uh, helping Samuel back and helping you, uh, how can they communicate to you? and how to, to, to be able to participate in that work of yours. So uh, right now, as I said, we have uh, three, uh, four, excuse me, exhibitions opening in the world. Right now there is a uh, large exhibition in Vilna that's open of Samuel Bach's work that will be on display for uh, approximately a year or two. Uh, we have an exhibition right now of 60 paintings in Houston that's opening. We have an exhibition right now in Toronto, Canada, 60 paintings to St. Petersburg, Florida, to the Florida Holocaust Museum. And the best way to keep Samuel Bach uh, going and to keep the message moving is for the ability to have exhibitions all over the world, to communicate, to train docents, so that young people have the chance to see his work, ask questions about the Holocaust, ask questions about today in their own lives, so that they can become better people. So in terms of getting involved, our goal right now is to bring an exhibition to Mexico City, of Samuel Bach's work, which will be the first in Mexico City, which would make us all very excited to be able to bring that message here and have your school children, your college students, be exposed to this artwork into a better future.